Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today it's time for our July wrap up. <laughs> I'm ashamed. Oh. Listen, mm, yeah, I didn't read a lot in July. I read seven books. I read seven books in July, but you know what? I'm not that upset about it because I went on holiday and then I had COVID. <laughs> And so I just feel like it was a lot. July was a lot. And I'm happy with the reading that I did. And actually I feel really excited to read more in August. I feel like it's actually been a good kind of break. Not really a break, because I still read a fair amount, but like it's been a good kind of stop and pause. And then I feel really excited about what I'm gonna be reading in August. So it's fine. Hang on, you're a bit high up. Should we lower you down a bit? You're looking a bit like not the right level. I was like, Hi guys! <laughs> As always, let's get into the stats and then we'll talk about my disappointments, surprises and hits of the month. I love stats. Oh my god, I love them. Yeah. Okay. I read a total of seven books in the month of July. I read a total number of pages of 2,320, which is not the worst. That's kind of similar to some other months that I've read. So you'll see that in the stats. So average pages per day is 74, which is lower than I like. I like my average pages per day to be at least 100. I always say it's not, doesn't mean I have to read 100 pages every day because I don't. I read none, like maybe two days and then I read 300. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, my, my reading is quite sporadic. I wouldn't say I'm like at the moment have a regular reading time I just kind of read when I really want to and need to I don't have a regular time I mean my most regular time for reading is the evening like before bed that is my most regular time but I have been watching <laughs> more shows with Tom lately so that might be why it's a bit lower <laughs> I had an average book length of 331 which is a lot longer than other months so usually I think it sits around 250 because I'll read a few novellas so 331 is a lot longer than it usually is so that shows you although I didn't read many books they were on the longer side of books. I had an average rating of 3.8, which is fairly high, but I feel like when it's a smaller sample size, it does tend to be higher for me. And the books spent an average time on my TBR of nine months, which I feel like is a good figure. I had some books which I'd literally just acquired, which is always good to kind of cycle through those books quickly. And then I had uh, some books that had been there like 18 months. So it kind of averaged out. So in terms of rating, I had two five stars, one four star, two 3.5 stars, and two three stars. I also had one DNF, which is not included in the seven books that I read. I read about 200 pages of it. We will speak about it later on, actually. But I haven't included it in the stats, and I haven't included it as one of the books I read, because I read about... 35% of it. So I actually read 2,520 pages this month. So a little bit higher than an average of 74 pages per day. In terms of genre, I read one historical, one horror, two mystery, one nonfiction, one romance, and one thriller. What was the romance I read? Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's just uh, forget about that, shall we? <laughs> Could you just cut that out? So a good mix of genres. I always like to have like you know, a little bit of every genre. That's kind of my taste in reading. In terms of the format of the books, I had one audiobook, two mixed media books, and four physical books. I usually have the biggest number mixed media books, but I'm really trying to like not acquire more audiobooks than I need at the moment. So if I can just read a book physically, I am tending to just read a book physically. I do love mixed media, you know, having the physical book and the audiobook together. But listen, I'm trying to save money. We're trying to be frugal bitches up in here. The bitch is broke! I'm not trying to buy many books full stop. I'm trying to be very, very frugal. That is a problem because it means I'm not acquiring many 2022 releases, so that is a problem. <laughs> I forget that I should be getting and reviewing these books. I always just like, I put them on my wish list when they come out and I'm like, job done. <laughs> I'll get them at some point. I'll buy that at some point. I'm like, I've put it on the radar that I need to buy it. But yeah, I'm not buying many books at the moment, which is good for my wallet. But I do want to read more 2022 releases because I have not read a lot yet. In terms of audience, I read five adult books and two YA books. So I feel like throughout the year, we've seen definitely my reading skewing more towards adult. I still love YA, but yeah, I just feel like I'm vibing a lot more with adult books at the moment or definitely older YA. I haven't enjoyed the young younger YA books I've been reading this month. They're probably a lot of my lower rated books. So in terms of how I acquired the books, one was from Book of the Month, one was gifted to me, two were physical books that I'd bought myself, one was on Audible, and two were sent to me by the publisher. In terms of series stats, all seven books I read this month were standalones. <laughs> 
which like I'm proud of myself for not starting any more series but I should have made progress in a series at least I've been trying to do that every month so yeah no progress in any series this month but at least I didn't start any that's the real you know go me here because that is real self-control <laughs> I don't know how good I'm gonna be at this after this year because the kind of finishing series is my big goal this year but I don't know if that's necessarily going to continue I tend to have one big reading goal every year in kind of what I want to focus on last year it was making sure I read more diversity this year it was finishing series so I don't know I might just like it might like snowball it might be like you know when you're on a, like when people go on a diet they like eat really restrictively and then when the diet ends they just eat everything I might just start all the series and then finally in terms of author status one author was a debut two were authors I'd read from before and four were new to me okay let's get into the disappointments surprises and hits So the first one is the book that I DNF'd. I can't find my physical copy of it. I don't know where it's gone. <laughs> it's somewhere here. I might just like flung it out the window in anger. <laughs> the book was Witches Steeped in Gold. So you'll know this if you watch my most recent video, which was reading the lowest rated books on my TBR. We'll speak about at least one more of the books later. This one, yeah, I'm so sad. This was probably one of the biggest disappointments I've had in a long time, where this was last year, one of my most anticipated releases. I was like, I tried so hard to get an arc I didn't get one I got so excited when it was fairy loot like I I was I can't explain to you how excited I was for this and it just really was not for me so this is a Jamaican inspired fantasy following these two girls who are witches I think I, mean, I don't really know one of them's a princess and one's the rightful heir and she has spent her life in prison and has just broken out my problem with this book is I didn't understand anything <laughs> I didn't understand who any of the characters were, like the side characters. I didn't understand what was going on a lot of the time. There was so much world info that was just dumped on you. It was like a barrage of just constant world info. And I need a bit of a break. Like I need a bit of a break. Like this was obviously such a complex and interesting world that the author had built up. And she was like excited to tell us everything. She was like this, this world building and this world building and this world building. And I was like, I don't understand what is happening. <laughs> So when I reach a point of 200 pages in the book and I don't understand what's happening, it's either start it again or DNF. So I just DNF'd it, um, which I am sad about. I've seen a lot of other people saying they DNF'd it. So not only does it have a low rating, but people who DNF it tend to not rate it. And a lot of people have DNF'd it as well. So I feel like it's not just a me problem. <laughs> but, you know, I do want to be careful about how we speak about books inspired by other cultures because I think historically there has been this problem of authors of colour getting criticised for writing cliche YA, right? And I've always said that isn't a criticism of a book because those authors are finally getting to write that stuff when historically that space has just been, made, you know, uh, taken over by white authors do you know what I mean there's been no space for authors of color to write those stories and it's so important that they're written and you know I spoke about how in the video out of my five lowest rated books on my TBR three were by black women and I think that is a combination of ingrained racism essentially in people saying oh I can't relate to this book oh it's cliche you know that kind of stuff unconscious bias and also you know we have to recognize that authors of color are much more likely to be victims of like targeted low ratings people who haven't read the books rating the books low on purpose so i think it's a combination of all of those things and i think as readers we do have a responsibility to think about that when we're rating books so i didn't like this but i would still recommend it to people to give it a go you know it didn't work for me but also some people have loved it and given it really high ratings so yeah i think it's a tricky one because you have to be aware of your ingrained biases we all have ingrained biases and then there might be a part of me that just doesn't understand it because of my separation from the culture I don't think that is the case I think it is to do with the writing and the kind of overwhelmingness of the world building and difficulty like discerning all the different pieces of information that a lot of people have experienced but that also is a possibility that I feel like we have to be conscious of. And then the other book that I would say was a bit of a disappointment for me was A Fatal Crossing by Tom Hindle. This has actually been made The Waterstones Thriller of the Month this month in the new paperback. I actually quite like the paperback but anyway um this is a historical murder mystery set on a ship. I read it in the cruise vlog where I read books set on a cruise, murder mysteries set on cruises on the cruise. I Mm, I just didn't love this. No, that sounds bad, guys. And forgive me for saying it. 
but that's how I felt. I think it's a good debut, but I don't think it goes enough places, right? There's a murder, this guy, this old guy is found dead. The murder they, they quickly find is a lot of people in the boat kind of with links to him and links to the art world that plays a big role in it. But the book just didn't have any reveals. It didn't have any twists and turns. And I feel like as a murder mystery, you need to have red herrings. You need to have piece of information that makes us second guess and think again. And I just didn't think that this had that. It was pretty linear. And I don't mind a linear story if you're giving us pieces of information that makes us doubt this person and doubt this person. And I didn't really feel like that. I just felt like, okay, we're supposed to suspect them and then we're gonna get told at the end who it is. Like, it wasn't great for me. But I would still read um, another book by this author because I think it is a solid debut murder mystery, but it was just a bit disappointing because I had such high hopes because it was a modern murder mystery and I always have high hopes for those. Okay, surprises. Just a mini surprise was The Woods Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins. This is like a YA slasher. We're following these two best friends who go on this hike together and things quickly turn wrong. So this was just a bit of a surprise. I give it, I gave it 3.5 stars. So it wasn't like crazy, but this was in that low, low rated video as well. And I enjoyed it. I would say, I said in the video, I had like a four star level of enjoyment, but it took me a week to read a 200 page book. I didn't have a lot of motivation to pick it up. So that's why I dropped it down to a 3.5, but I had a lot of fun. I think it was fun slasher ridiculousness. If you're going to read this book, you need to go into it knowing it's crazy. Like it is ridiculous. Like it is redonk. Like it, like <laughs> the ideas of reality and possibility and like actual any kind of sense go out the window. This is crazy. I really liked the, the relationships. I liked the twists and turns. So yeah, I think it was a fun read, but it is ridiculous. Like it's not just a normal horror, it's a slasher. It's like, think Scream. It's just ridiculous. It's almost comical at some points. And it's quite gory as well. So be warned, I wouldn't recommend it to like younger YA. And then this could also be cast as a hit because it was one of my five stars for the month, but it really surprised me how much I loved it. And it was Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. This was my book club pick for June. I always read them the month after at the start of the month. I loved this. I gave it five stars. I couldn't believe how much I loved it. Now I did read this when I had COVID. So <laughs> I wasn't up to doing much else other than read this. Um, I'm sure you know the story. We kind of have these three friends in this kind of close knit town in Australia who have kids at the school together. You know from the start that at the end of the story a murder is going to happen. So you're kind of leading up to that. I loved this. I loved the like housewives drama of it all. I was obsessed with housewives of Salt Lake City season two while I was reading this as well the vibes together was just immaculate i mean hi baby gorgeous hi hey, baby gorgeous I loved the like claustrophobic school setting. I loved all the women and their relationships. I loved all the different storylines and difficult issues that this tackled. I loved, there's like, um, at the end of all the chapters, there's like snippets of the police in interviewing all the different parents from this school, like individually. And it just like created this aura of gossip and everyone speaking by each other's backs. I just thought it was so good. So well written. I loved the Anne Moriarty style of writing. It reminded me of when I read Taylor Jenkins Reads writing and I just really like her style of writing. You know, it reminded me of that. I got so attached to the characters. I just had the best time reading it. I really had a great time reading it. And I haven't had a five star since I read this and this was the start of the month and I'm like, it's time. It's time for the five stars. I just feel like I need some five star energy right about now. I did start watching the show. I only got like 20 minutes into the first episode and I wasn't vibing because the vibe that they made the show I mean I, I'm still excited to watch it but the vibe they made the show was like serious like a bit like ooh, oh, what? you know that vibe whereas I want Real Housewives of Salt Lake City drama that's what I want that's the energy the book gave me it was funny and the show wasn't funny it was like gray and serious and I'm like what like why are you doing this to me <laughs> And then my other hit of the month, this is only a hit, I wouldn't say a surprise because I expected great things from this author, was The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. This is my other five star of the month. This was also read on the cruise and I loved this. So this is set on a luxury cruise in the Norwegian fjords. Lo, yeah, Lo, our main character, she just had her house robbed and she's like real, she's real like on the edge. She's like, oh my God, I'm like real anxious right now. But she still has this job to go on, which is a luxury cruise in the Norwegian fjords and she's 
supposed to like review it for the travel, mag travel magazine she works for. And on the first night, she goes to the room next door to ask to borrow some mascara. She meets a girl there, goes on with the night, doesn't see the girl again. And then at night when she's lying in her bed, uh, she hears a splash in the water as if a body has been thrown off and sees blood on the window next door. When they go in there, no trace of any of that. No trace of foul play. So she's like, am I going crazy? Did I really meet this girl? Like what is happening? I love the claustrophobic setting. There's literally only like 10 guests or something on the boat. So it's like a very uh, close knit group. Whereas a fatal crossing, like there's 2000 passage on there. It could be anyone. This, you know, it's like someone you've met on the ship. It's a very close knit circle of characters. I loved the route this went down. I would say from like the two third mark of the book, it goes in a really interesting direction that I think it's hard to like maintain suspense, maintain excitement, and it does it so well. I loved the ending, I almost cried at the ending, and Ruth Ware is just a favorite author. With this book, it's her third five star. She has really classified herself as one of my favorite authors. No, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. You know, it hasn't got the best ratings, but I really, really enjoyed it. It's just a classic, fun thriller. You know, it's like a quick read, really tear through it. And I'm like, wow, I love this. I need to read more, just like fun thrillers. Like, oh, so good. And Ruth Well, I just feel like she's one of the major thriller authors that really knows how to write a female protagonist. We look at Riley Sager, right? I feel like Ruth Ware and Riley Sager, I just view in tandem. They're kind of the same level of popularity and like prestige, I feel like, in the thriller world. And Riley Sager could not write a woman character of his life, and yet we keep letting him try to do it. Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? He really can't. He's like, they're all crazy, and yeah. Like, it's, it's so annoying. Whereas Ruth Ware really knows how to write a complex female character. Something that Riley Sager was criticised with for Survive the Night. Riley Sager's like, why am I involved in this? Why you bring up my name? <laughs> but something he was criticised with for Survive the Night and that I've heard criti criticisms for his latest release, House Across the Lake, is, you know, a female protagonist having mental health issues and that being like, you know, the reason for it's like, can we trust her? Can we really trust what she's saying or whatever? Whereas in this, uh, Lo does have mental health issues. She does take, I think, antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication, something like that. But it never is cause for us to doubt her. We're like on her side the entire time. We're, we're there in her corner, whereas, which I much prefer, you know? We're like angry at the other people who doubt her because of that. And we're like in her corner like, no, you know? It's very different in how the authors paint uh, mental health issues. So I just love Ruth Ware. The It Girl comes out, I think, in a couple days. So yeah, I really, really love this. Absolute hit for me. So there we have it. That was my July wrap-up. Let me know how reading went for you in July. Again, I'm not upset with the book books I read this month. We had a lot of extenuating circumstances. And August, let me tell you, I've got like some hefty five-star predictions lined up for August. So I'm very, very excited. I feel like now that I filmed this, the reading can begin. I didn't read anything yesterday, um, August the 1st. So today's August 2nd, I feel like, okay, now, now it begins. <laughs> um, but thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you watch till the end, comment the eye emojis down below because the cover of uh, Big Little Lies, I love their little eyes. They're like, who can we trust? Um, so comment the like double eye emojis down below if you got into the end. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know how your July reading went and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.